I assure you that this case is the answer to any lawyer's prayer. Not only does your firm stand to make a fortune, but you will be a shoe-in for full partner. Oh, yes, I was about to suggest that myself. This afternoon will be perfect. We'll go over some paperwork, and then uh, we can discuss your uh, retainer, uh, healthy retainer. And so I'm glad that you're somewhat uh, up on this case. Oh, it's my niece, my grandniece, actually. Well, she was abducted uh, due to the negligence of her father. Oh, I agree, that's very shameful. That's right, her name is Serena Baldwin. Serena Stanton Baldwin. Oh, hi, Karen. Good morning. Hello, come in. Thanks. <clears throat> hey, you want some coffee? Um, yeah, that'd be okay. great, thank All you. Right. I hope I didn't interrupt you. Are you in the middle of anything? Uh, no, I was just filling out a permission slip for Serena so she can take a field trip and go see Pinocchio. Uh, all this for a class trip? Yeah, well, you know, security reasons. The minute she sets foot off the school lot, it becomes a, a big issue. And, uh, you know, I don't want to scare her, so I, I do this stuff when she's not around, you know, so I... It's illusion that... Things are normal. Here. It doesn't seem like an illusion to me. I mean, she seems like she's a really healthy, normal, well-adjusted kid. I mean, you're doing a great job. Yeah, well, before I go patting myself on the back, you know, these kidnappers are still out there and about. That's terrible. Sorry. Not to mention this woman who's claiming to be Serena's biological mother. Anyway, what do you want to tell me? Well, no, I feel terrible. I mean, I don't want to come here and dump on all my problems onto you, and you've obviously got your own, your mm -hmm. own full load. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm all ears. Uh, this has to do with uh, what almost happened to Kevin. Yeah, uh, I have been going over it and over it in my mind, and I can't help but think that maybe I did screw up. No, you didn't screw up. You told me yesterday that you put the IV in and you did it properly. I know, and I hate to second guess myself, but I have to consider Well, don't the... second guess yourself. Nothing has changed. You did everything properly. Okay, let's look at what happened. You walk into Dr. Collins' room and discover that his IV line is all the way open and his head has not been elevated. Wait a second, what are you saying? This is Karen's fault? I can't believe this, man. I figured out anybody, you would be able to see the reality of the situation here. Take it easy. I never said Karen did it. All I am saying is that ivy lines do not open by themselves and headrests do not lower themselves either. You think somebody has it out for Kevin? Actually, I think somebody has it in for Karen. Hey, I could have sworn you were told to take some time off the work. I did. One day, Frank. One day. Hey, we're going to have to surgically remove you from the hospital. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to be in bed or something? How'd you get past mom? <laughs> Strategic planning. Okay, well, now that you're here, what's so important? I'll have a few loose ends to tie up. Anyone seen Julie? Did you not read the sign? It says humming and other perky noises are strictly forbidden. Uh, did you happen to see the article about Frank in the Chicago American? The Chicago American? Wow. Paramedic Frank Scanlon jeopardized his life when he re-entered the burning building in search of survivors. Yeah, go down. Two more paragraphs. That's where they interview him. What you do? Memorize it? Practically. <laughs> yada, 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 yada. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know Frank was a college football star. Yeah, he could have played for 
professionally if he hadn't gotten hurt. Wow, for someone who's had his dreams dashed, he sure is a happy guy. So what do you think? Well, actually, I mean, I don't mean to downplay Frank's heroism or anything, but how do you think that our little story traveled from here all the way to Chicago? Must have gotten picked up as a human interest piece, you know, by a national news service. Even my father was impressed. Well, I would hang on to Frank if I were you. It's not many men who would jump through burning hoops to impress your father. I'm not looking for his approval. I just want everything to work out well for Frank and me. I won't let anything come between us again. Dad! There you are. I was just leaving. Ah, well, then I'll make this very quick. I've got some news. Yeah. Alan Quartermain has asked me to continue my seminars on a more regular basis. seem very pleased. It's great. I mean, if that's what you want. I told him I'd probably turn him down. You did? Mm -hmm. Honey, the only reason I came to Port Charles was to ease my daughter into her internship, you know? And now that I see you're all right, the job's working out, you got a good man who seems to care for you, there's no reason for me to extend my stay. Are you sure about this? I've been breathing down the back of your neck quite enough. I mean, that's why you left Chicago away from your overbearing parents. I left because General Hospital offered me an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I mean, you're very sweet to deny it, but I mean, truth of it is, there has been some tension between us since I got here. It didn't come from you, I know that. I'm not trying to lay blame. You're a woman now. I mean, it's only natural for you to want to be on your own. You know, and you're free to resume the life that you started here. Not your old man hanging around. I hope you aren't basing this decision on me. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I do have your best interest at heart. You know? Truth of it is, Frank's quite a guy. He's wonderful. I'm really proud of him. You should. I hate to run out in the middle of this, but I'm, I'm going on duty. Go. Go, go, go. All right. I'll catch up with you later. Okay. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Oh, I get it now. You figured out a way to break Frank and Julie up. The last time I remember basking in the glow of a hero was when Stanley Warner rescued my kitten from the top of our backyard oak tree. Uh, don't start with me. Uh, oh, and he's modest, too. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> oh, there's the reason I risked life and limb to get here. Excuse me. Huh? Uh, I've always wanted to say this, my hero. Oh, you saw the article. Are you kidding? My mom called from Chicago. She said the hospital was mentioned in the American. I loved the interview. Why didn't you tell me? It didn't seem that big a deal. How did they find you anyway? Beats me. Some reporter called the house, and you, well, you can imagine the earful my mom gave him. Yes, I can. <laughs> And then she put me on the phone, and for the next 20 minutes, I answered questions. I go on and on talking about myself. Well, on the inside, I'm panicking, thinking this guy is probably going to misquote me, and I'll be in trouble or mortified or embarrassed. Uh, it's 15 minutes of fame. It's wild. And energizing. You certainly don't look like you need bed rest. Depends. On? On what happens in the next few hours to keep me awake. I want to be with you, Julie. Oh. Yeah, but I, I heard Ramsey went nuts when he found out Karen would be in the OR with Devlin. Mm. Well, Dr. Devlin got into it with Karen, and Chris ended up in the OR instead of her. Exactly, which wasn't good enough for Ramsey. You know, considering how overworked everyone is, I'm just surprised this hasn't happened before. What was that supposed to mean? Well, Joe, I just mean, you know, 
Everyone makes mistakes, especially when they're stressed. Now, Karen had a miserable day. She lost a patient, and it really... Just like, I don't care what kind of day she had, Grace. She didn't do anything wrong. Now, listen, don't go second-guessing yourself. That's the worst thing that you could do. You're right. I just need to keep the faith. Thank you for reminding me. Well, you know, that's what fathers are for. I don't know what I'd do without you and Joe. Dr. Burgess took me off surgical rotation. What? When? Yesterday. Uh, I want to believe that she is on my side, you know, somehow behind the scenes. Yeah, well, what if she isn't? I mean, what are you going to do? Fight it. Like any self-respecting Baldwin. But if I have that kind of mistake on my record... Even if it's just an accusation, I mean, I, I could end up without a surgical residency anywhere. Well, listen, if you need any kind of backup, you know, I'm here. Thank you. Of course, I don't think you will. The way you went head-to-head -head with Devlin the other day, I mean, you stood right up to him. Yeah, someone called that foolish on my part, though. Not me. He's a jerk, and he should be reminded that he's not God. Of course, he did save Kevin's life, so maybe he's not bad guy. I don't know. You got these egos. These doctor egos. All day long you gotta deal with them. How do you do that? Well, you just get used to it. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to. Yeah. But Ben and Devlin is a brilliant surgeon and uh, I'm gonna learn a lot from him. That's very mature. Thank you. I just want you to know if you have any trouble I would not mind cutting him down a few pegs. You won, fair and square. There it is, all hundred million. Count it if you'd like. May I go to Uncle Rex now? Please, Daddy. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you, but Uncle Rex will take care of you now. Yes, well, thank God for boarding schools. You know, none of this would have happened if Avery had just been reasonable. He owed me and he welched. And Dominique, I mean, she didn't do anything to make up for what he did. She gave my money to her greedy husband. I was the next Stanton in line. But now, thanks to this miniature whelp, I'm back where I belong. With my family's fortune. The Stanton fortune. My fortune. How much did you hear? Enough to get the picture. Well, then you heard me say I'm leaving Port Charles. Yeah, and I also heard you giving Julie a guilt trip, something you're particularly good at. You got me all figured out, don't you? Why do you think that the Chicago American chose to print a touching yet provincial story about a paramedic from Port Charles, New York? Hmm? Maybe they thought it was a good human interest piece. I also seem to remember that that editor thinks he owes you his life for some run-of-the-mill bypass that you performed. All my patients have reason to be grateful. Can you stop acting so innocent? I'm ready to make a deal. Deal? You leave Port Charles without messing up Julie and Frank's relationship. And our history will remain a secret, you have my word. Julie will never find out about us. Between our crazy schedules and your father hanging around so much, we haven't had much time alone, and I've missed it. Me too. But you don't have to worry about my dad anymore. He's going back to Chicago. You're kidding. Dr. Quartermain asked him to stay on, but he turned it down. Really? I think he might have taken it, but he assumed I wouldn't want him to. 
That's Mom. We've got to find that woman a hobby. Uh, how's Karen? How do you think she is? Good point. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you. It's just, I, I've been where Karen is. Accused of mistreating a patient. And believe me, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Yet alone, Karen. I just, I wish there was something I could do to help her. Me too. Mm. And I have an idea. If you fight this, what do you expect the hospital to do? I expect that they will interview my co-workers as to my state of mind before the incident. Is there anything you have to worry about? Oh, uh, well. Uh, I was rude to Devlin. Had a fight with Chris. I lost my first patient. And then Chris found that letter, which I'm sure he's not going to keep secret, so... Wait a minute. What letter? You don't know, that's right. Um, Jagger, he sent me a letter. Well, fill me in. Jagger has uh, had this female partner. Uh, her name's Fran. Uh, for several years. And she showed up at our apartment in San Francisco. Yeah? She had her own key. She didn't know I was going to be there. Go on. They've been... having an affair. For a long time. I'm sorry. And... I didn't want to believe it, you know. I, I, I didn't believe it at first, so I uh, I wrote Jagger and I, I said, you tell me the truth. And he did. He wrote me back. And in that letter, confirmed what this girl told you. He, uh, he said that, uh, he would give me a divorce, and, uh, that's the first time, you know, we've ever used that word. It's a word we, that we never use. He doesn't deserve you. Thank you. Um, I gotta, I gotta go, okay? Listen, um... Let me fly to San Francisco. I'll talk to Jagger. I'll, I'll straighten things out at the hospital. These are my problems, but it helps knowing that you're on my corner. Well, I think you're being a little close-minded about Karen. I mean, even if she had the worst day of her life, she's still going to be on top of every medical procedure just who she is. Oh, wait, wait a second. Matt, don't misunderstand me. I hope you're right. It's just that it happened at a very, at a really bad time. Uh, isn't there some way you could say something on Karen Wexler's behalf? Julie. She's a very responsible doctor. What they're accusing her of, it just isn't true. Hey, Jeff. Hey, you look a lot better. Thanks. I realize this isn't fair, and I'm going to fight it. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that, because I'm behind you 100%. Good. I know just where to start, too. Hey, just remember who you're dealing with, okay? Hey, I appreciate the loyalty to a friend, but the facts are very clear. Karen Wexler almost cost a patient his life. I just told you I know she didn't. There has to be some way to fight this. Well, if she's sensible, she'll leave it alone. What? Take her medicine. Move on. Speaking of moving on, we'll talk later. You are not going to believe why Mom paged me. What? Uh, the dean of Colson College called. It seems his athletic director is retiring. They read the article and they want me to replace it. Hey! <laughs> Colson College, isn't that in Chicago? Yeah.
Is there any proof this Baldwin is or has ever been an unfit parent? There'll be plenty of evidence in due time. Good morning. This is Charles Gibson. And Lisa McCree. Tomorrow, how to play the stock market from your computer. And some fall home maintenance tips from the house doctor on Good Morning America tomorrow. <laughs>